Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to use the hair templates in order to get the best results when applying and creating hair to your 2D characters. There are tons of unique styles, colors, and shapes to choose from with the Hair 360 pack, and we're going to explore how to get the best results when creating and customizing them. The 360 Hair Tool pack comes with a number of sample styles that have already been prepared. You can find these under the Hair folder in the G3360 Hair Tool subfolder. There is also a subfolder for hair templates that you can use when you want to customize your own styles from scratch. Okay, now for the purpose of this tutorial, I already have my custom hairstyle saved in Photoshop and I'm going to apply a template hair to our dummy character in Cartoon Animator. I'll then give it a quick test in the 360 head creator just to see the results when the character's head rotates. This looks good, so let's continue on. Applying custom hair to your character is actually quite simple. I'm going to start off by exporting the character from Cartoon Animator to Photoshop. Keep in mind that you need the pipeline version of Cartoon Animator to follow this workflow. Once the character is launched in Photoshop, you'll see a main layer group called RL underscore talking head, which contains all of the sprites for your character's face and hair. The subgroups are head bone, which contains all the yellow crosshair bone position indicators, as well as left and center, which contain all of the sprites for the respective front facing and 45 degree facing character profiles. We'll just focus on the center profile here for simplicity. Let's take a brief look at the components of the cartoon animator hair set first. Here you can see that in the front we have bangs and hair on the temples, which always go in front of the head. The other components are all in the back of the character's head, parts such as ponytails, pigtails, buns, etc. Under the center folder, you'll find all the facial sprites as well as the hair sprites. Naturally, the hair sprites on the front of the head will be higher up in the layer order, above other things like eyebrows and eyes, while the other parts will be behind the main face sprite. Since the hairstyle we prepared only has a single simple bang part for the front, we'll delete all the extra groups that we don't need on the front of our character's hair. You're probably wondering what the big box around the character's face is. This is actually a very important hair component that is used to cover areas of the head with hair that are not covered by the front or back parts. The big rectangular shape doesn't really matter because all of the areas that are outside of the border of the character's face will be masked out in the end. If you want your character to have a closed buzz cut, this is essentially the only hair component that you'll need. Okay, let's start importing in our custom hair now. It's important to have each hair component on its own layer, so we can move them around separately later on. I'm going to select all of the layers aside from the background layer, right click, and then duplicate these layers to the project that I launched from Cartoon Animator. From there, let's scale everything to a reasonable range before we start replacing sprites. Here, I'm scaling all of the layers simultaneously to keep everything together. From here I want to replace all of the template sprites with the ones that I just brought in. Make sure that the layers are all correct and that you delete the old template images. You may want to do some individual resizing here as well. You can see that we have a very simple hairstyle with a bang component in the front, a mask layer, and two pigtails at the back. Once you're satisfied with the positioning and scale of your new hair sprites, then just save in Photoshop and the results will automatically update in Cartoon Animator. If we preview the results in the 360 head creator, you'll see that they're not ideal initially. The first thing I want to do is go into the layers back in Photoshop and bring the scalp mask layer down a bit more. This will cover more of the forehead as our character moves from side to side. We can then preview now and see the results are better, although we'll likely want to tweak the transform positions of both the scalps and the front bangs for each of the angle layout points. Once I'm satisfied with the coverage and positioning results, then I need to ensure that the layer order is correct. You can see when previewing that one of the pigtails goes in front of the neck instead of behind. To resolve this, just find that layer in the layer manager and click and drag it so that it's behind the neck layer in the head hierarchy. Now when you preview, it will go behind the neck like it's supposed to. Okay, once I'm satisfied with my hair set, then I'll want to save it for future use. To do so, just make sure that you're in the custom section of the content manager under the hair folder. Here, you can create as many subfolders as you want to organize your style library your way. Simply press the plus key at the bottom of the content manager and the hair set will automatically save. From there, you can apply it to any character that you want. Notice that when I apply it to this character, that it will need a bit of resizing initially in order to match the new head shape. Also, when we preview, you can see that we'll also need to adjust the transform positioning of the hair components as well. Follow the same procedure as I showed before to ensure that the positioning is as accurate as possible. 
After that, you need to do the same thing with the layers as well, since we've applied it to a new character. Generally on most characters, you'll want to click and drag your back hair components to somewhere near the bottom of the layer hierarchy, so they'll be behind the neck and torso. Your hair can easily be applied to any G3 character, and it will be compatible with all motions applied to it as you can see here. It's really easy to create your own library of hairstyles that you can quickly apply to any character in a snap, with maybe a few minor adjustments. One final thing to mention is that the rotation of the hair sprites will be based on the position of the bone that controls them. You can see here that this pigtail will rotate around the yellow bone crosshair, and the front section will do the same. Keep this in mind when refining the bone position of your hair components. That's about all there is for this simple hair tutorial. Don't forget we have tons of other tutorial videos on our Cartoon Animator 4 Learning Resources page that you can check out to learn more about how to customize your character in various ways. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.